This is ChartingWealth.com for Friday the 17th of April 2015. Let's look at what's been going on in the market over the last eight days or so. You can see the trend line, good trend line, actually connecting four two-day candles. We're going to change this one up just a wee bit. There we go. And again, good trend line. Look at that. It's going through the bottom of all of them. Remember the rules for the trend lines? Bottom up, top down if you were drawing one on a down move. Now, this is an up move, of course. This is a strong week. We're in the last of the big six months for good movements, either strong up or down movements. Sell in May and go away has been an adage a long time when the big money leaves the market. Folks go on vacation and the market can get real choppy. But this is the total market, IYY. It's the way we always start our reviews. And you can see we have continued to see up moves. We saw the crossing over going up on the MACD, the moving average convergence in, uh, oscillator indicator. We also saw about the same time again. We love to see both happen together. The derivative oscillator moving over going up. Now, let's go back and look at the four-hour chart. What's it telling us? Well, we saw, if you remember a few days ago around the 15th, we saw the market apparently, well, the 14th, 13th started, looked like it was about to start rolling over. We never called getting out because we, of course, said it's not crossed going down. We've continued to see a strong buildup all the way back on the 6th where we had crossing over going up and we have seen it level off a little bit right in here. We saw it move back up again, digest a little more, then move back up again. Looked like it was digesting a little on the morning of the 16th and then moved up some more. Now, not a lot of strong movement today. You can see this reflected in the derivative oscillator where they're about the same, maybe a little less because the strength, This, uh, I guess that was yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, and yesterday afternoon uh, after lunch. This is the morning on the 15th, and this is the afternoon on the 15th. You can see a strong up move. Then you can see sort of where things were digested this morning, and then a little bit of a move up, a push down, and that's where the market ended. Again, still we see the derivative oscillator moving off some. We're seeing a little bit of convergence, so a little bit of weakening as you can see here in the up move, but the overall market still in an uptrend, getting ready for Friday, which is expiration Friday. This is usually a bullish time. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I don't know that I'd want to be taking all my profits and riding it through uh, expiration Friday, but we shall see. If you're a firm believer and reader of history and you like, like I do, the Stock Traders Almanac, uh, it will tell you that this expiration Friday is typically a bullish time. So anyway, and a good uh, a book that I always recommend, good reading. Now, let's go back to the two-day chart. Let's go over to uh, SPY, which is the S&P 500. Same kind of up movement we see. Uh, almost the same, similar, very similar chart. Uh, again, strong movement up in this large, this 500 large companies, the Standard & Poor 500 index. Now let's revert back to the four-hour chart, see what we see. Again, very similar. We see what's called the doji, lots of indecision this morning, but then up moves in the afternoon. Again, ending off about where the market ended yesterday. So not a lot happening there. There is a tightening up here. We're at the top, as you can tell, and a little tightening up, what we call converging, coming together. So again, derivative oscillator petering off. Uh, will the market continue to go up? Can't tell you, but um, I would feel better if this were getting further apart instead of closer together. But again, if we look at our two-day Again, we just continue to see movement up. And until we see that correcting, remember, big charts are big waves. Smaller charts are smaller waves. Big waves have more power. It takes more to break them than small charts. That's why we didn't talk about getting out of the market earlier this week when the small waves started rolling off on us a little bit. But you got to continue to watch. And we always want to pay a lot of attention to this trend line that we have particularly the two-day trend line, how it's reflected out on that four-hour chart. And if it's broken, then we've got some things to look at. 
and if we start seeing convergence here in the MACD, along with a drooping, uh, a reduction in the derivative oscillator. Okay, now we're going to switch over to the Qs, my favorite chart. I just love the Qs. It is the NASDAQ 100 technology stocks. Same kind of movement, but look at this. Considerably weaker in its up move on the two-day chart. We're just now getting close to a crossing, and that's still not happened. That is a little bit of concern there for the Qs. One would have thought there would have been enough strength in this movement to bring the MACD over, the derivative oscillator over earlier. Also, why did that happen? Well, let's revert back, and you can sort of see why. Look at what originally happened. Back on the 6th, up move, leveling off, still not a lot of push. Then some up moves, and then a leveling off substantially with a big drop here. Again, never got below our two-day trend line. That is a real trigger for us saying, danger, danger, get ready to get out, if not before, particularly if there's a crossing. And look, we're continuing to see a converging of the moving average convergence divergence. And again, look at what's happened over the last day and a half. Three, four-hour charts you see of movement that is totally contained within this candle over these last two days, as far as the body, the last uh, two four-hour charts, day and a half, not much movement up at all. So again, something to watch. It's just not been as strong as the S&P and as the overall market. So continue to watch it. Still in an uptrend. The two-day chart is still telling us that we've got nice movement up. So continue to watch it. Hopefully you've made some good money going from down here, what, about 105 up to about 1, what is that, 108? Um, 108 yeah, 108. So uh, hopefully that has paid off for some dollars to you. Now lastly, let's go to the one commodity we look at. We're looking at gold, oh, metals, precious metals. Look at gold here. We have seen gold just monkey around and not be willing to roll over. We actually even drew a trend line, and uh, that is actually not even a correct trend line. Remember what we talked about before? Bottom up, top down. The trend line, if you are drawing one, should go to the from the top down. And of course, what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing that, look at this, one, two, three, four. We've got eight days worth of movement all contained within this one candle. In other words, it's not had the strength to go below or above. What is gold waiting to do? Well, on the two-day chart, it's still in an uptrend. We do see a leveling off of the derivative oscillator, and it looks like the MACD is getting closer together, converging, maybe for a downturn, but gold just doesn't want to go down at this point. Nice ride up. We hope that you made money on and that you cashed out totally or you took some profits before we got into this holding pattern and just can't tell what it's going to do. Look at that. It's almost in the exact middle of our Bollinger Bands, which are, of course, our volatility bands. Volatility means a lot of movement. Well, there's not a lot. It's been right here, and it's reflected by the Bollinger Bands moving in at almost equidistance. So that's where gold is on the two-day. Let's get a better feel for the smaller chart, the half-day, the four-hour. And again, look at it. You can see all of it right in there. And again, gold is not breaking above that little uh, line that we drew, the little trend line. And if you look at the if you look at the derivative oscillator and use it, you can see and the MACD, they're getting closer together, they're converging, and you can see derivative oscillators petering off. If we look just at the four-hour chart and you said which way is it going, well, it looks like it's trying to go up, but I wouldn't be betting on it. So let's watch and see what happens in the market on Friday to see where things go. We've given you a good review as to what's been going on this week and on Thursday, and hopefully it will be a good bullish day, and we'll see the indexes continue to climb. Thanks so much for watching. Wish you the best of trading, and join us all the time. Remember, chartingwealth.com is the website. We'd love to have you sign up for our email. We've got lots of great stuff. Go there and check us out. Thank you again for joining us.